Well, thank you so much uh, and good afternoon. I'm going to look at the camera because I know we have an audience uh, at, uh, we have an audience virtually in addition to the terrific, uh, uh, the terrific audience that is here. But let me begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional territory of many nations, the Mississauga of the New Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewa, and the Wendat people. It is really wonderful to be here for the launch of the Asia Pacific Foundation of Canada's first virtual women-led trade mission to South Korea. And I want to thank you, Consul General, Consul General Jung, and Director General Jung, and uh, and for COTRA for warming for welcoming all of us here uh, so warmly today, so that we continue our incredible journey of developing those not only bilateral ties between Korea and Canada, but indeed the continued trade and commerce tie that uh, we are about to uh, talk about. And Christine, thank you always for your leadership and uh, that of the Asia Pacific Foundation and for inviting me to this very special launch. Um, and most importantly, a big congratulation to the entrepreneurs and uh, those who are going to be participating on this mission. And I want to wish you all the very best, and I'm looking forward to your future successes. I want to thank the APF for their important work. And um, I know that the APF themselves don't brag, so I'm going to brag for them. Um, they've spent the last 35 years deepening the economic and cultural relations between Canada and Asian markets through trade, through investment, and certainly through innovation. Last year, I was really thrilled to send APF and a delegation of, of uh, in fact, that was the first uh, led women's business mission uh, to Japan. And um, and it was a good it was a it was a terrific mission for all the women leaders and businesses who participated. And I think if I uh, I don't have the numbers off the top, but I know that out of that mission, we did what missions are intended to do, to facilitate better trade relationships, but ultimately created um, business opportunities and business growth for Canadian businesses and certainly for all businesses. And when I learned that uh, the APF was going to plan a trade mission in February, I thought, this is terrific. I'm definitely going to be on that trade mission. And I'm definitely going to go to Korea. And this is going to be wonderful. But uh, COVID-19 uh, hit. Uh, this pandemic has changed our plans. And they changed the plans of so many Canadians. But even though much has changed, since the beginning of uh, earlier this year, advancing gender equality through trade still remains a commitment that is incredibly important to this government. And we know that women's economic empowerment is the right thing to do. We're here today because we know that advancing gender equality is crucial for business growth and global economic prosperity. Indeed, I think that's even more important now than ever before. Over the last few months, I've been working closely with my international counterparts, including Minister Yu. Minister Yu, for, uh, for those at uh, COTRA, it's not going to be, uh, she is certainly no stranger because she is my counterpart in Korea. Uh, she is the Minister of Trade. Uh, so we have been, uh, we are, we're committed to um, ensuring that our trade agreements and that our policies are indeed inclusive. And uh, with gender equality and women's economic empowerment at the very core. And again, this is a real opportunity that we see for our businesses, our women-led businesses to grow and to contribute to global economic prosperity for both of our countries. And because investing in women makes sense, according to um, a recent study done by the McKinsey Institute, let me just give you a couple of the numbers. Advancing women's equality can add up to $150 billion to the Canadian economy. 
and $112 trillion to the global economy. However, according to the World Economic Forum's recent report on the global gender gap, worldwide only 55% of women are engaged in the labor market as opposed to 78% of men. And the report finds that, uh, that we need to make this significant change now because we don't want to take 100 years until we get to gender parity in our economies and in our society. When you hear the numbers of the contribution to our economies and to job growth, I think it's not only uh, the right thing to do, but it makes economic sense for us to be doing this as well. Our government, of course, is very committed to this. Um, we created the Canada's first ever women's entrepreneurship strategy. It's a $5 billion initiative that is breaking down the systemic barriers to economic success by providing access to financing, creating networks of support, funding women-led businesses so that more women entrepreneurs can start up, scale up, and of course, to access new markets like that in South Korea. And as we look to the world, uh, and the, the, the world and the road ahead, we believe that trade will be key to fostering business growth. And our government is working hard, along with our international partners like South Korea, to ensure that inclusive and diversified trade is very much a part of our global economic recovery. And since 2015, with the entry of force of the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement, that strong economic partnership between Canada and Korea has deepened. I'm going to repeat a little bit uh, of what uh, of uh, what the Consul General has just said, but uh, Canada, Canada two-way investment in both Canada and Korea has grown, helping our people and our businesses. This prosperity will is set to continue uh, as of. January of this year, 95% of Canada's exports could benefit from near duty-free access into the Republic of Korea. And by, and by the implementation of the full agreement by 2032, virtually all tariffs, I mean, on bilateral trade will be eliminated. This is terrific. It is the right condition for our businesses to be working in. And at a time when improving trade between countries is absolutely critical, Free trade between Canada and Korea has proven to be tremendously successful and beneficial for Canadian exporters in many of the traditional sectors like agriculture, fish, seafood, industrial goods, but also with much, much opportunities in the digital economy and in innovation. The Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement has helped businesses, just to give you an example, um, like our award-winning ice wine producer, Pilateri Estates Winery, they've seen sales to Korea increase by as much as 400% since this agreement was signed. Creating more opportunities for our businesses is at the very um, foundation as well of a recent joint action plan to facilitate the flow of goods and services. We did this at the very beginning of May with countries like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, and South Korea. And this bilateral and multilateral work to keep increasing our opportunities to trade must continue. And today's event is significant because it gives us reason to be optimistic. We have come a long way in this fight, uh, this fight against COVID-19, and there's, there's much, much more to do. And I'm so proud of us as a country. I'm so proud of Team Canada um, because I know that together, we are going to work together, together with our, our partners in Korea so that we can create the economic benefits that people in Canada, and people in Korea are depending on. And trade and that open trade will help us do this and I think together we can ensure that we will have an inclusive economic recovery. And I want those businesses to know that we're working very hard and we'll have your back all the way along, along with the APF, of course, who's going to put you through the, uh, who's going to put you through the, uh, you know, the, the, the training session to get you all ready for, this, for the mission. So I want to thank you very much. But today I also am so delighted um, that I also get to um, turn the floor to my colleague, 
uh, Minister Yu for her remarks as both of us, Trade Minister from Canada and Trade Mission and Trade Minister from Korea, for Minister Yu to say a few words on this important event. So thank you so much and uh, let's give her a wonderful virtual welcome.